What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest bootleggers from version 7.0. This is based on Android 13. The codename is Strimbino and this is the 28th February 2023 build. And both vanilla and the GApps variants are available and of course as usual I have flashed the GApps included variant. The flashing guide for this particular ROM will be present in the description. By the way, I have used the official latest Orange Fox recovery to flash this ROM. In the Android version section, it shows this BT LG or the bootleggers logo and it has this Chinese kind of text as the bootleggers logo of course and we have the bootleggers version as 7.0 stable. The build date also shows up as February 28, 2023. The build type it shows Shishufied official and the maintainer is Vishak so huge thanks to the developers of this ROM and we have the Android version as Android 13. Of course you will get this clock and if you make it to 1 o'clock you will get the Android 13 easter eggs. Looks beautiful. Let me go back. We have this other code names like this musical code name and stuff. We have this night drive. Then we have the security patch of latest February 5th, 2023. Not quite March yet because this is of course not a March build. And we have the Soviet star kernel. Then the build number is present on the bottom. In the system settings, we get this kind of look. In the gesture settings, this is how it looks like. On the bottom, we have the swipe rig screenshot and you can turn it on. It also works fine. We have the share edit delete options and capture mode also appears when it's needed. And there is no like system updater on this particular system settings. But I think as this is the initial build, they will be added in the future updates. And we have the other things like the press and hold power button action you can control. Quick torch, the double tap to check phone, one handed mode also works perfectly fine. System navigation gestures are there in the settings of it. We have this build length customization. Then we have the haptic feedback and stuff. Then the swipe to invoke assistant is also there and it is working perfectly fine. And the left edge right edge customization is there then the full screen gestures are there let me go back we have the two button and three button navigations and we also have the quickly open camera right here in the pop-up camera settings we have the camera calibration you can calibrate the front camera with this and the pop-up camera sound effects you can control and the other settings like the raised dialogue and stuff is present talking about the home screen this is how it looks like we have the bootleggers launcher right out of the box let me show you as you can see it shows shishu launcher and this is a bootleggers launcher we have this freeform mode of course with this also you will get the split top mode and stuff and in the recent panel if you're noticing we have the screenshot the google lens and the clear all button and the ram usage actually shows up on the bottom and if you want to see the customization of it we have the misc settings right here and you can control the background depth and stuff with this then in the recents you can customize this memory info and stuff you can disable it if you want and the app drawer customization is also there then we have the home screen customization there is the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen works perfectly fine we have the wallpaper scrolling and zooming then we have the other things like the themed icons and stuff and we have the icon settings as well but let me tell you there is no hidden or protected apps in the stock launcher or there is no app lock in this particular rom as of right now which i definitely miss but maybe in the future updates they will be added but here talking about the widgets and stuff yes the google clock widget and the opening and closing animation works perfectly fine also the weather widget i have added is also working perfectly fine but i couldn't simply find the battery widget so the battery widget is simply missing from this particular rom i would say to the left of the home screen we get the google's discord page that's pretty smooth experience swiping up will get to the app drawer and swiping down will get to the quick setting panel and in the light theme the quick setting panel stays white i definitely like it i'll show you the quick setting panel later on but let me actually show you the wallpapers so this wallpaper that i'm using is the bootleggers wallpaper and you can get multiple options like these from the change wallpaper settings as you can see there is the community wallpapers this is where i got it from and as you can see this is the one that i'm using also you can go with the other options they definitely look beautiful like these ones definitely bootleggers has one of the like unique looking wallpapers that i have seen i have to say also there is the other wallpapers like this btlg history so they definitely look cool there is the vaulty wallpaper and stuff and we have these other bootleggers logo wallpapers and here let me actually show you this and there is the shishu theme and stuff and they definitely look awesome with these kind of look and we have these plethora of options i would say in the misc settings also then we have this on device wallpaper i think this is the default wallpaper of the bootleggers from let me show you there is the 16 colors for the wallpaper and basic colors and we also have the dark theme the themed icons and the app grid customization you can do from right here up to 6 by 10. talking about the quick setting panel toggles we have the wi-fi the bluetooth and stuff and of course the bluetooth battery shows up on the status bar no issues with that then we have the flashlight, the dark theme, auto rate, nightlight, screen recorder is also there. But there is no HEVC kind of thing for the screen recording. 
we have the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time of course the battery saver is there do not disturb google home controls data saver hotspot nearby share screencast then we have the airplane mode one handed mode disc dimming and the high brightness mode if i go into the edit toggle there is no always on display toggle surprisingly so this is definitely weird i have to go into the like settings and then display settings to actually enable the always on display which is again definitely weird but of course double tap to sleep works perfectly fine and if you're wondering about the screen of FOD and stuff yes that works perfectly fine let me show you one more time with the screen of FOD yes it works fine and double tapping to wake is working perfectly fine as well but the display is running at 60 hertz no overclocking options for the display let's talk about the stock camera well you are getting the aperture camera present by default this is the lineage based kind of camera and stuff let me actually open it and here okay so there is the lens switching option there is the 1x 2x and the other options i don't know why there's the two 1x modes if you are noticing up close there is two 1x modes not really sure why it's the same lens but yeah there is the ultra wide angle lens you can use it if you want there is also the video settings and stuff but i have been using a gcam over here this is the mgc version of the gcam and with this you can do multiple customizations and you will also get the lens switching option with this gcam as well and in the video settings with this gcam you can shoot 4k 60 fps videos without any problems let me actually show you that yep 4k 60 fps is working fine you can switch the audio from the phone's mic or the bluetooth device's mic so that is really good with this gcam i would say so you can definitely use the gcam i'll link it below in the description you should not worry there is also the night sight mode and stuff and even the front camera and the portrait mode and stuff it should be working perfectly fine you do not need to worry about the experience with this gcam but yes it takes too much detailed photos that i have to say jumping into the settings in the bootleg dump starts you will get the customizations of course now in the status bar settings we have the clock and date customization here you will get the clock style you can choose it left right or center and the ampm style date font style and the format you can choose let me go back we have the network traffic indicators then we have the old style signal icon and the 4g icon in the status bar icons we have the headset bluetooth etc kind of icons and we have the double tap to sleep in the status bar and we have the quick setting and here we have the show data usage for the quick setting only in the notifications we have the reticker then the allow notification when screen is on in call vibration options and the ignore dnd and the flashlight blinking for incoming calls i guess you can change the rate of it in the lock screen settings we have this lock screen clock fonts and you get definitely plethora of fonts just like the evolution x rom so yeah here you will get multiple amount of options for the lock screen clock let me go back we have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen and wake up on plug and the screen of UDFPS or the screen of FOD is there and it is working fine also there is the charging info while you are charging it will show the states on the lock screen in the bottom so yeah and in the animations we have the screen of animation there is the default CRT and scale let me go back we have the power menu here we get the advanced restart options and in the hardware keys we have this playback control as well in the app related tweaks we have this part app volume control there is the system features we get the icon packs these are the options and we have this icon shapes as well then we have the ui style you can change it to pitch black or this nixodos and these other options there is multiple options for these and we have the font styles again you can change this to multiple amount of options the default one looks a bit weird to me that's why i've been using the pixel font but yeah this is the default font it's a little bit taller if you're noticing up close so yep this is how the default font actually looks and these are the navbar styles that you will get we also have the smart pixels option and you can actually use this to prevent burning and stuff then the ignore window secure flags option is also there so that's pretty much all the customizations which are present in this rom now in the battery settings this is how it looks we only get the battery temperature there is no charging cycle or the current battery design battery capacity those things are simply missing but there is a battery percentage enabling option if you enable it this is the battery percentage you will get in the status bar then we have the battery manager and the usage now let me actually show you with the aku battery i have tested with the screen on time is really good i have been getting about nine hours of screen on time almost you can see and that's a really good number even the screen off or the standby time is about more than four days the combined use it shows about like more than two days so definitely i would say it's a really good experience with the battery life but you have to remember i have a brand new battery that's why i have been getting amazing battery life and in the health section it shows as 96 percent so yeah my battery health is really good that's why i've been getting really good battery life but if your battery is too old it may give you five to six hours of screen on time depending on your battery's health but overall the battery life performance is really good on this rom 
Also, the fast charging works perfectly fine. You should not worry about it. In the sound settings, we have this media call ring, etc. Volume controls, and we have this phone ringtone for SIM one and SIM two. You can choose that separately. And we have this vibration and haptics. There is the alarm vibration, touch feedback, media vibration, etc. Let me go back. We have this dial pad tone, screen locking, charging sound, and we also have the Mi sound enhancer. From here, you can choose the presets. And there is the youth edition, the sound quality with the headphone jack and Bluetooth and stuff with speakers and the earpiece. Everything is perfectly fine. You should not worry. And there is also this bass booster preset and stuff. And there is the enable hi-fi audio option if you are willing to see that. In the haptic feedback, you can customize the whole device vibration intensity. So this is really good. Also, we have this clear speaker option if you are into that. And we have this face unlock and the fingerprint option. I have already added the face and there is this switching option to allow face unlock on like swiping up and stuff. Let me go back. I have added two fingerprints as well, but in the more settings, there is no app lock over here. You have to keep that in mind. Maybe because it's an initial kind of build, official initial build, you can say. So maybe in the future updates, we'll get the app lock. But at least as of right now, we do not get that. Now let me show you by double tapping in the home screen. Yes, the phone actually goes to sleep, and again, the fingerprint scanner is working perfectly fine, which I already showed you. But I'm just showing you again, and from the lock screen. So yeah. The fingerprint scanner speed is very fast, no issues. Now let's talk about the face unlock and here I have to swipe up and hold the device towards my face and as you can see it unlocks. Even with the face unlock, I would say the unlocking speed is really fast, no issues whatsoever that I have faced with the face unlock. Now in the display settings, this is how it looks like. We have the brightness level, adaptive or auto brightness you can enable and in the lock screen, we have the skip lock screen option. Then if you scroll down mode, we have the show device controls, control from lock device. Always show time and info is the always on display, but then again, we do not get the always on display toggle over here. You have to enable this one to actually enable the always on display. And from the always on display, this is how it looks like. Let's test the double tap to wake. Yes, that works fine. And even double tap to sleep is working fine when the always on display turned on. And here, if I just tap the fingerprint scanner, when the always on display is enabled, it unlocks perfectly fine. And I like this thing that like in the storm, everything is very smooth. The animations are very smooth, even though it's running at 60 Hertz. Just notice the animation, how smooth it is to actually unlock and lock the device. Everywhere, the performance is very good on the storm. No issues that I have faced. There is no like glitching in the animation and stuff. Those things are simply awesome in the storm. And in the dark theme, we have this scheduling option and you can enable the dark theme from here. Display size and text options are there. There is the high contrast text as well. In the night light, of course, you can enable it and change the intensity and schedule it from here. The colors you can change to boosted adaptive and we have this double tap to wake. Ambient display option is also there. And if you turn off the always on display, there is a pickup option. And let's test that actually. Let's put the device on the desk and just pick it up on my hand. And yes, pickup is actually working perfectly fine here. No issues whatsoever. And there is a double tap to wake if I miss that. And in the custom display settings, we have this high brightness mode and this just dimming. Yes, the high brightness mode also works fine. You do not need to worry about it. But let me tell you about this DC dimming. It's a little buggy. Like right now, it's enabled perfectly fine. If I just increase or decrease the display brightness, it's not like doing much. But if you would notice, it just flickers a little bit. Like the brightness is not perfectly like going up and stuff. It's just like flickering a little bit. If you're noticing in the background, I don't know why this happens. But yeah, this is how it works on this when the DC dimming is turned on. And if you're in an app like MX Player or if you're in an app like VLC, where you can increase the brightness by swiping up, sometimes that player's brightness increasing or decreasing thing is not working while you have this DC dimming feature turned on from this quick setting panel settings. So yeah, that is how it is. So depending on that, you may disable the DC dimming from here. I would love to see the anti-flicker mode, but yes, this DC dimming sometimes is buggy that I have seen even in the Evolution X ROM. If you're facing issues, I would just suggest turn it off. That will be perfectly fine. Let's talk about the basic things. Well, safety net passes right out of the box. You do not need to worry about it. And the Vaulty calling and stuff should be working fine here too if you insert a Vaulty SIM card. In the DRM info, it shows as L1, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p on this ROM without any worries. And this ROM, of course, offers the Google Pixel unlimited backup in Google Photos. And let's talk performance. Well, while daily driving, again, the animations and stuff everywhere, while opening apps and stuff, it has been really smooth experience. No issues whatsoever that I have faced. And even switching between apps is just a ease of experience, I would say. And overall, while scrolling and stuff, also, I haven't seen any kind of lags or stutters. This ROM is very smooth experience, even with 60 Hertz that I have to say. So overall, my daily driving experience on this particular ROM has been really good. You can definitely try it if you want. 
and if you don't need the MIUI camera and stuff you can definitely go for it but yeah if you need the ANX camera or MIUI camera experience or the Leica camera experience then I can definitely suggest go for the Evolution X ROM but if you just need the stock Android kind of experience with ample amount of customization and stuff definitely this ROM will be good for you and again talking about the performance everything as you can see is very smooth and you can see the benchmarks of this particular ROM from the screen the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to get you an idea about the whole UI's performance on this ROM. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the latest bootlegger's official build based on Android 13 on the Redmi K20 Pro and how it's working and what are the features of this ROM. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDNTech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.